Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And today, I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk to you guys or go over speed density maps like the VVE map or the VE map, taking your uh, log and applying it to the map and doing some manual manipulation or smoothing out. And it's really important specifically on the ones that use the VVE because of the calculations and how we can help to make sure that the calculations uh, don't skew off outside of our zone and end up throwing things off. So I've got a, a copy of my tune. I've been working on the, the Silverado since I went back to the blower, but since I've added extra methanol and changed the intake piping, I'm having to redo my speed density tuning and I've got to get it dialed in real good because I've done away with a math sensor and we're going strictly speed density tuning. So I've got pulled up here. Let me get this up where you guys can see it. And then you'll see on top of it, I've got my scanner open up with the last log that I did. It's got about 15 miles worth of data in there. So there's a lot of good data. And then I also have a copy of my uh, map before. That way I can reference back on it. So I'm going to go ahead, copy my data like you normally, no, excuse me, like you normally would. Jump back over to my table and do the paste special multiply by half. And then let's go ahead and look at what we've got here. The first thing that sticks out is this number right here at 1600.2. So there is one kind of anomaly on that data. It's a pretty big jump between these two points. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth that out and see if it adjusts any. And it jumped to 1222. I'm going to adjust it this way and see if it stays in that area to see how far off it is both ways. And then I can go back and it went to 1227. So I'm actually going to go back to 1222, leave it at that. And I feel like that's probably a better number looking at the cells around it. I know that my zone boundary is probably around 0.3 for that zone. And I also know that cars seldom uh, drop below 0.25 bar, or in this case, pressure ratio, because that's generally where idle is, or you know your throttle body closed, that's the max amount of vacuum. So this is probably a one-off. And because of that, I want to smooth the rest of this data below 0.25 to make this as smooth as possible for whenever we calculate these coefficients. So I'll come in here and interpolate all this down. Go ahead and grab all this section all the way out here, interpolate that down. And might have an issue in this area on the right where it's 3600 to 3800 because there is a decent shift. I'm going to leave that as is for now. If anything, it will break it in this zone. And so that's something I'll keep an eye on next time I go out and log. There might be some stuff and I might have to do some uh, shifting manually, shifting it down so I get up into the 3,800, 4,000 range, RPM range, and, and do some throttle play to hit those cells. But honestly, that area, and in fact, this whole area over here, is one that you don't do a lot of tuning in, especially on forced induction, because you're going to be down. Uh, you're going to be down in this area. That's where the majority of your boost is. To give you an idea, 0.97 is generally atmospheric. So anything above 0.97 to the 1.02 is going to be whenever you're moving into boost in this situation. So we'll go down here. We'll go ahead and interpolate this stuff up, smooth this data out, and kind of keep an eye on it, make sure that it doesn't skew too wonky. So the next area that I want to look at, we've got a spot right here that didn't get filled in, but we can look all around it once again and kind of get an idea. I'm going to interpolate it this way. Being that we're at, well, yeah, we're starting to come back down. It kind of peaks right there. It should stay about the same. Yeah, it moved one, and that's what I expect it to do in that case. So this area, once again, this area is kind of getting out. We might hit some cells in this area. So I might do some manual adjustments, but looking at it, I don't think it's too far off. You can generally see whenever an area is too far off. This area, this is an area where stuff is too far off. You see where we've got a 17 and a 1442? That is because I have man I have gone in and tuned this. We actually hit these cells, but we're probably not able to hit these cells right here just based on the efficiency or the way that the motor operates with this supercharger on it. And I should come in here and probably smooth that out. And we'll do that here in a second. But let's focus back down kind of on this area and see what we can do. And our big one is, is if we come in here and we smooth some of this area out, we want to make sure that it doesn't skew off from this direction because that's a pretty big jump. 1140 to 1435 is probably a little bit high. 
but that just means we'll be fairly rich in that area. But what I can do is come down in here and I'm gonna bump this area up manually a little bit. So I'll put 1.02 in here to bump it by 2% and kind of look at how it works with everything else that's around it. And that, that looks a little bit better. I like that, that looks pretty smooth. I'm gonna manually smooth this out a little bit. Same ordeal, smooth this out a little bit. And then I'm gonna cross smooth this. And whenever I say smooth, realize I'm talking about interpolate. I don't actually use the smoothing options in here very often. I'm more about using the interpolation where it actually looks at the numbers and, and applies some math to it. So same ordeal, we got a, we got a one-off number right here, this 1896. We're going to interpolate across that one and then we'll look at it both ways. It jumped to 1852. If I interpolate it this way, it jumps to 1854. So that's probably accurate, you know. And you can kind of use that as a tool to get an idea of whether or not that would be right. It's, you know, this is a weird situation where we've got a long stretch in here and you can do some interpolation that cross this far, but then look at your numbers and see that's probably too low. I'm gonna jump back to my scan and look at that area. That's 2800 RPMs in the 9700 range, 102 range. So, what did I say that was? 2800. So we're super rich there though. So there is gonna be a shift there. We are gonna to have to bring that down some. And that is quite a bit. Let's go back. We were at 19% and it says that we were 12%, 10 to 12%. We've already enriched it 5%. So if we enrich it another 4%, that's what it would be. I am inclined to think that Well, that's this area up here. Let's go ahead and smooth that one over. We're super rich, so we're subtracting. I'm inclined to think that we're gonna be pretty close, but maybe a little rich there. Let's see what happens if we try to interpolate between these cells. Yeah, yeah, that's making more sense. That looks more like how I'd expect it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way. We'll come up here, do the same thing here. We're gonna interpolate between these values. It shifts it back down. It falls fairly in line if we were to do it that way. 1571 to 1565, and then 1633 to 1638. So once again, these are ways that you can use the interpolation and go up and down to see how it interpolates and then interpolate across and see if it stays within a couple. And by a couple, I mean like 50 points or less. Anything over 50, you probably have something else that you wanna look at. So let's see if we can interpolate this section and fill these in, and then we will fill in this giant empty gap over here. And so we get a decent idea, like we've got a 1402 and a 1626 below this. If we interpolate across, it goes to 1528 and then we can come down and interpolate down and see, and it actually shifts it down. But I'm gonna leave it at 1528 to leave it a little bit on the richer side. Remember on a VE map, this is measuring how much air is in the cylinder. And so the more air, the more fuel. The higher these number are, the more fuel. So to give you an idea, we'll come in here and we're gonna grab four rows of this, interpolate across, and it didn't change much. If we go back and look at our scanner, eh, we're at 2% to 1% in that range, so we're not expecting much change. This is in the 3,000 to 3,200. So that's probably a pretty good interpolation for that zone. We'll do the same thing there. We got a little smaller zone here that we can interpolate. And then we'll come down and fill this like so. Now we've got kind of an outlier here. If we were to come over and look at where our data is, we are on the downward curve, which makes sense because we're getting outside of the power band. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the smoothing on this. We're from 1859 to 1784, but we're kind of at a high point. There might be some downturn to it. Oh, starting to rain. And that is only shifting 10 to 15. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as, that as is there so I can fill that section back in. And then we'll do one more kind of Hail Mary section through here. That's one to keep an eye on. That doesn't look good. I don't like how that looks now because we are 18 and to 19. We should not have a number that's less in between there. This is the prime boost zone on this vehicle. 
And so these are areas that we've got to pay attention to. I, I think it's not too bad there. We, we're going to be rich through here. I'm, I'm fairly, cons uh, fairly certain that this area is rich, so I'm going to leave that area rich. But I do want to fix this area where there's the potential for a hole. So if I look at where I have some numbers that do not gradually increase from the 3200 range to the 3600 range, that's where I need to interpolate that data. So it does right there, but after that it stops. So there is a valley right through here, and I want to fill this valley in. So that area is a complete valley. I'm going to grab that whole thing and then go to the left to right, and it'll bring all those values up to fill that valley up. And we're a little bit spiky there. We're a little bit, little bit high from that, so I'm going to see if I can smooth that out just a little bit. That looks better. That looks better. So... That's a more gradual climb both ways. Now, that being said, this, this map area is kind of dialed in. So we're from 3,400 down. We should be fairly accurate on this tune. As I said, we've got some weird stuff here where there's a pretty big break. I'm going to come in here and make some adjustments. And I'm just, once again, I'm going to use the interpolation to smooth this out a little bit. But I'm going to kind of stagger step this. And you'll see what I'm talking about. This is all kind of out of the range of where we're working, but I'm going to make these adjustments and stagger step these down a little bit in the hopes of making the data a little bit more valid through this zone. And I'll do just about this much here. Get a nice stair step down through there. And now I've got a smoother edge on this. It's not quite as abrupt. There's not a big step off the end of that. We still got a pretty big step over here, and I could come over here and try to smooth this section out manually, but honestly, I can tell by looking at that because it's stepping up as opposed to stepping down. If it's stepping down from this, this row right here, or this column, and then it steps down to this column, that means we're going to be stepping down to a leaner point. So if this is dialed in, that means that this is going to be too lean. But as if, as I said, this should be closer to be dialed in on this 3400 row, our column, that means that this is going to be rich. I'm fine with that. I'm going to run this because we are going to get into an area where there is more boost. I want that to be richer there. And in fact, this area right here looks a little bit lean. And so I'm going to kind of fatten this up. And I'll do that by dragging a row across here and trying to interpolate that. And I'm looking at this 1528. It's going to step up. There we go, 1698. And then I'm going to fill these areas in the same way using interpolation to fatten all these up. And so if it goes pink like that, that means I'm adding to what was there beforehand. If it goes purple, it means I've subtracted. Well, that one, I'm not too worried about. It's still above the cell below it. So let's fatten this area up. Boom. Same idea with these two areas. Fatten those up a little bit. And then I'm going to drag this one across like so. Okay, now I've fattened this area. In fact, that area didn't even change because it was already there. So I've smoothed that section of the map out now. And this map is starting to look good. I mean, there is still probably what I would consider maybe a hole down through this area. You know, this might be an area where we come in and bump some of that up, fatten that row up a little bit. And we don't want to get too carried away because we will start getting to the area where it should not necessarily be getting any richer. We're not, we're not producing as much oxygen through there. But this gives us a starting point. This tune, I would say, or this map is a good map to go ahead and copy it before you do your calculations. Actually, it doesn't matter. You can do it afterwards too, and then calculate. And there you can see that, see how this went all the way over there? That's because that's stepping into that zone and it has to calculate that data for this zone. And so you can tell by looking, as I said, where it's it was adding values that were uh, lower and then subtracting values to make these calculations work. It didn't touch these because these are two separate zones up there. Same ordeal down here. We got into a different zone. And so it's always a good idea to kind of look at the data and how it crosses over to the zone. This is not a very good crossover point. I don't like that, but it's in the zone that I'm probably not going to be uh, actually getting anything in. But I can still come in here. I can still make adjustments. I can interpolate some of this to smooth it out. We'll do that. Maybe we'll come in here and do a couple of these just to make it look a little bit better. And I can do the same thing here. I can look at, okay, that's pretty high. We want to drag that down. 
we want to smooth that out across there see how that looks and that should be a little bit better on both ends so we'll copy that and then we'll calculate you'll see this this will jump out into this area here and this will fill in this area here most likely yep there it went so now we should have better coefficients calculated and that looks a little better there's still kind of a, a, a fall off right there but it looks smooth through this area which means it's probably pretty good and it looks smooth through this area honestly the only time you're going to hit this area is whenever you're letting off throttle and uh, if you have DFCO turned on, those aren't going to be valid anyways because we go full length. So I like how this map looks. I'm going to go over here and throw it in the manifold open just in case for some reason it actually uses that. Calculate it. Save this as step four and go load this one. So that's pretty much how I like to look at the map. Look at the cells that surrounds what I got on my log and make manual adjustments. And you want smooth transitions. There should not be abrupt shifts from the cell above it or below it or the cells anywhere around it in fact from a diagonal angle all that stuff so look at those and if there's something that's more than like a 50 uh, shift you probably have an issue where you might need to do some smoothing and then pay attention to the before and after whenever you calculate the coefficients as I said if I haven't already I'll put a link in the corner that goes to the zone RPM stuff that will give you a better idea of how to set those up and I actually need to do some adjustments on mine here. But as always, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Uh, throw a thumbs up. If you have any questions, make sure and hit up the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.